The old Maxwell Street has been called both the Ellis Island of the Midwest and the New Orleans of the North. It was a Chicago entrance for a host of immigrant groups, from Germans, Italians, and the Irish, to Eastern European Jews, and later Mexicans and African Americans migrating from the South. Many lament the development that's resulted in the loss of culture and history of the once vibrant neighborhood on Chicago's near west side. Chicago filmmaker Phil Ranstrom chronicles the rise and fall of Maxwell Street in his film Cheat You Fair, the story of Maxwell Street. It's having its world debut tonight as part of the Chicago International Documentary Film Festival. Ranstrom says that although chronicling the history of the market ultimately consumed 12 years of his life, at the beginning, he didn't quite know what to expect. I was really a kind of a naive observer. When I first came down there, Steve, I was really concerned about why this area was going to be torn down. I'd heard uh, some people who were disgruntled about it. They couldn't believe that it was finally going to be torn down. So I wanted to really go down and check it out myself to see what it was all about. A friend of mine, Bill Griffith in town, had uh, uh, suggested that we go down and do some time-lapse photography to capture the ritual You know, they start early in the morning before dawn and set up their tables and all their wares. And this is a tradition that's been going on for over 100 years. When the sun comes up Sunday morning, uh, this street transforms itself into a regular European bazaar. We're talking thousands of people and almost a thousand sellers are here ready at sunrise. So when the sun comes up, it's showtime. And a way of life that was about to be destroyed. So we were going to capture it with our time-lapse photography, and we did. And while I was down there, I ran into people like Junior Wells and these amazing blues legends who were just walking around the street. And I thought, you know, this is an awesome place. probably the most interesting, colorful, vibrant place in Chicago. And another aspect I noticed was that everybody got along. You know, you had blacks and whites and Latinos and people of every ethnic group who were very friendly with each other. So unlike the area down there, the the near west side area, which was typically divisive and gang-ridden, this was kind of an oasis. And what do you think explains the fact that this was an oasis in this city that is known for tensions and known for crime and things like that? That is the magical thing about Maxwell Street, is that for over 100 years it served as a refuge for the downtrodden and the poor and the persecuted. It was a melting pot of of people brought together in their common struggle. From its earliest days when they arrived in Chicago. Earliest days, what set the tone was the Great Chicago Fire in 1871. Overnight, over 100,000 people were left homeless by the fire, and Maxwell Street was one of the few areas spared by the fire. So it started to become a populated place. People migrated into the area and began rebuilding their lives. At the turn of the 19th century, there was growing anti-Semitism and prejudice against Jewish people in Eastern Europe. And there was a great migration here. They ended up at Maxwell Street. The area eventually became known as Jewtown. And Jewish people really made Maxwell Street the great market that it was. Later in the 20s and 30s, the great migration from the South, black people also escaping prejudice and poverty in the South, came to Chicago looking for a better life and ended up at Maxwell Street. So you had these disparate cultures, Jewish people, black people, Greeks, Italians, every ethnic group in the world trying to pull themselves up. And you say that really the peak of Maxwell Street was when these various groups combined right around the middle of the 20th century, the 1950s, the 40s, 50s. That was really the heyday. What would it have been like had we been walking through that particular market in that area then? You could walk down the street and probably hear 20 different languages being spoken. Yiddish was a common language. Everybody knew Yiddish because it was the trader's language. It was the language of the bargainers. It was a language of commerce. Of commerce down there, exactly. But you heard every language down there. And one of the great things back in its heyday, you could buy 
the best items down at Maxwell Street. It wasn't just a market for poor people. It was for rich people. They would come down there to get things that you couldn't normally find in other stores around Chicago. So it was really the precursor of the modern-day shopping mall. We're talking here on 848 on Chicago Public Radio with filmmaker Phil Randstrom. He's the director of the new documentary, Cheat You Fair, which chronicles the history of the Maxwell Street market in Chicago. One of the biggest contributions that the market made to American culture is in the form of blues, specifically electric blues. How did that come to be? The electric urban blues is by far Maxwell Street's greatest legacy. It started with blues artists who came from the South, migrated here, began playing their acoustic guitars in the streets, and out of necessity had to plug in in order to be heard in the large crowds. And thus a new genre of music was born, electric urban blues, later to be called the Chicago blues. I'm going to tell you how the blues was born. We come up the hard way. We was a slave here for 400 years. We come up the hard way. And a blues is the way you feel. I have sung the blues in shaded tears because you feel sorry for yourself and you're being mistreated. And the black man, that's, that's, that's why the blues come from him. He sung as he felt. He had a hard time. And he could go back and dig up the blues. Why? Because he lived it. He lived it. It was a raw sound, a lot of times, you know, with amplified distortion. Jimi Hendrix, as a matter of fact, fashioned his style of playing from Little Walter. that grew up on Maxwell Street and used the same kind of distortion with, you know, his amplifier and stuff that Hendrix later revolutionized rock and roll with. So the impact on modern music is so profound, and Maxwell Street was the hub of this revolution. Here we are now in 2007, and the Maxwell Street market as we know it has long since passed, at least in its form. There have been dramatic changes in that area, Uh, the expansion of University Village and townhomes and condominiums and shops. Uh, The university itself has now moved into that area. What do you think has been lost by not having the Maxwell Street market uh, such a vibrant part of the city of Chicago? Well, we lost a great third place third place being, you know, a neutral gathering spot where people could kind of mingle and you could bump into anybody from any walk of life. We're missing this wonderful third place. We're missing this melting pot of culture, a friendly gathering place where people learn to get along, where the only color that mattered was green. (laughs) Well, you have been working on this project for 12 years now. You're going to be screening it tonight for the public at the Chopin Theater in Chicago. But as I understand it, you're actually going to recreate elements of the Maxwell Street Market. So how will this red carpet roll out here? We've invited a number of interesting characters from the old Maxwell Street Market, everyone from blues breakdancers to blues performers to artists to, to hawkers and general people who were down at the old Maxwell Street. We want to uh, recreate kind of the flavor of what it was like just outside the theater for the premiere. So it's not going to be your average red carpet ceremony, but we're going to have every oddball and interesting uh, character we can find down there. The film is called Cheat You Fair. It's a documentary that's the work of director Phil Randstrom, narrated, by the way, by Chicago actor Joe Montaigne. It will be screening tonight at 6.30 p.m. at the Chopin Theater in the corner of Milwaukee Division in Ashland. You can also catch its screening on Sunday at the Portage Theater at 3 p.m. at 4050 North Milwaukee. Phil, thanks so much. Thanks so much, Steve. No, 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 no. By the way, even though the old Maxwell Street Market has long since passed, you can capture some of that flavor and many of the vendors by going to the new Maxwell Street Market, which takes place Sundays along Canal Street near Roosevelt Road in Chicago.
It's 848. I'm Steve Edwards, 53 minutes after the hour. And Entertainment Tonight reports may suggest...